Awesome, everyone. Thanks so much for joining and being on time. I'm going to get started to appreciate you for showing up on time and anybody who comes later. We're going to record it. So today's session is going to be part two of the open house marketing plan. Part one is where I just gave you a broad idea of the different ways that you can generate leads through open houses. Well, today we're going to get specific and I'm going to start off by showing Google pay-per-click. So I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how we can set up a Google pay-per-click campaign in order to drive leads to you based on the topic of open houses. So the first thing I want to cover is your website itself. So when a person sees an ad and they click on it, where are we going to drive the traffic to? So I'm going to broadly speak about the ideas here. Um, typically, you guys would drive them to your open house. So if you have a website and you had an open house, obviously you would have a listing about that property and that's where you would drive the traffic to. So like, I'll just go to this example listing page. Now, the problem with driving traffic to one specific open house is that you're going to have to remember to go into Google every week and change the URL because that open house has passed and the date and time is different and all this information. So what I'm gonna suggest you guys do is set up what looks like this. This is a generic open house landing page where we don't talk about that one particular open house. We just talk about open houses in general. Now I have a step-by-step -step tutorial video that shows you how to make this exact landing page from scratch for free. So when we give you guys the recording of this, we're going to include that video as a refresher just, just to show you. But if I scroll down, you'll see I talk about uh, the keyword, which is open houses. And then there'd be a sample video. So I would just be a video of me standing in front of my office and I would hit record on my phone. And the, the, the video would be something like this. I'd say, hey, it's Danny Wood over at ABC Realty. If you're thinking of going out to any open houses this weekend, fill in the form below. What we're gonna do is we're gonna email you a list of all of the open houses in the Durham region this week. Plus we're gonna keep you posted on next week's open houses and the week after that. And on top of it, we're going to include all of the listings that match your criteria specifically based on price and area and what you want. Now as a buyer agent, you don't pay my fees. So this is totally a free service. Just fill in the form below and I'll follow up. Boom, that's my video that I would do. So I'd have a video. We have a, a Google map showing the area that we're targeting. It's not even interactive. It's not populated with any open houses. It's just literally a map showing the area that you're serving. And then a generic contact form. So these are the four elements that you want. You want a video, you want a map, you want a general call to action, and you obviously want a contact form. So this is what I'm gonna to use today when we do our Google pay-per-click is the URL to this page. Um, now, how you do it, maybe you can make a landing page on your own website. Like there's lots of agents out there with lots of different products and programs. I'm just gonna use this. This is uh, uh, webly.com and you can make a branded version um, where it's like your name.com and it looks exactly like this. And we have a video that shows you step-by-step -step how to make this landing page. Okay, so going forward, now we have your landing page made up and we're gonna do Google pay-per-click advertising. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you go to Google, you type in Google ads, and there's gonna be a bunch of sponsored ads. Um, you can just click the first one if you want. When you do this, you're gonna create a Google ad account. Now, use your Gmail if you have Gmail or what do you log in with your uh, YouTube? Same thing, it's all a Google product. So uh, Google Ads, you're gonna log in using whatever your Gmail or YouTube username and password is. Now I already have logged in, so let me log in here. Your dashboard, when you first log in, it's gonna look slightly different than my dashboard because I actually run ads and uh, yours probably hasn't run any ads. So you won't have any data um, or anything like that. What you're gonna do is the first step is over on the left is click on campaigns. Now, some of you, when you create your Google account for the very first time, you won't even have that option. They'll, they're gonna walk you through building your first campaign. Now, if that's the case, uh, that probably means that you're set up on Google Ads Express and you do not want that. 
it is a total waste of money. So when you create your Google ad account, the first thing I want you to do is click on the question mark for the help. I can call them. You might not have the option to call because you haven't spent enough money, but you will have the option to chat with them. So what I want you to ask them is say, um, I'm new to Google ads. Is this account a Google ad express account? If so, I don't want that. And then they're going to switch it over to the real Google ads account. Okay. So the Google ad express account, they made it to simplify things for you, but so much so that you're just going to waste your money. Um, so you, step one for 90% of you is to click on the question mark and call or chat and ask if you're on the Google ad express account, how do I switch it over to the regular Google ads account? And then maybe it takes 24 hours or whatever, but they'll do that for you. Okay. So now assuming you're set up on the regular Google ads account, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the campaign tab over on the left and we're going to create our very first campaign. So let me hit the plus button and new campaign. Now, ultimately in the future, you're going to want to set it up as leads, but this is more technical than most of you are going to be able to handle because you have to create a thank you page and you have to add code and tracking code to that thank you page. So if you're not comfortable with setting things up, don't do the lead one. Do just traffic, website traffic. So 90% of you, you're going to do website traffic. Um, I would suggest most of you just do website traffic and then switch over to leads afterwards because you can do that. So we're just going to do website traffic. It's a lot easier to set things up. We're going to do a search campaign. So don't do display, shopping, or video. All of those have a time and place and a rhyme and reason of why you would. But uh, for the most part, it just costs you a lot more money and the conversions are a lot lower. So that's not what you want. You want search. You're going to put the website, so www website.com, whatever your website is, is what you want to plop in there. So go ahead and type that. And then I'm going to hit continue. Okay. The campaign name. So think of it like this. When we create a campaign, that's like one bucket. And within that bucket, we can say, we're willing to spend this much per day. We're willing to spend this much per month. We want this many different ads. So it's kind of like a collection of everything. And then within that, we can get more refined. So just name it local search because we're going to create future campaigns. The first one we're going to create is based on generating leads for open houses. So we're going to create that next, but you have to do a campaign level and just call it local search. Leave search network checked on and uncheck display network. The display network would be if a person is on a website and it has those keywords on the page, then your ad will appear. Um, that's fine if you're doing a branding play and you do banner ads, but if you're doing text ads, definitely do not do that. It is going to soak so much of your money and your conversions are going to go down the drain. So uncheck display network and leave um, this one checked on, search network. They're going to default the entire country that you're in. You do not want that. You want to check off this little option that says enter another location. And then I'm going to say Oshawa. I want to search it. I found it. Here it is right here. And I can target. So say I do multiple cities. You can do that. I'll do Whippy. Whippy, Ontario. Target. There's other ways of doing this as well. I can do an advanced search. And it's going to show me the blue sections. So anyone in these blue sections, if they do a search, they will see my ads. So you can do it based on the city, like I just did, or you can do it based on a specific area. If you only target uh, specific pockets of the town, like for example, say you did Toronto, which is a little much larger area, but you only did uh, the beaches in Toronto, you can type in the postal codes of that area. So I'll show you a postal code in Oshawa, L1G2B5. I'll do a space. So here it is here, and I can target that area, or I could exclude that area as well. So say you were targeting, for example, me. Say I was targeting Oshawa, but I didn't like doing South Oshawa for whatever reason. I could actually 
type in the postal code or drop a pin of South Oshawa and then hit exclude. So watch when I hit exclude, you're going to see it's a red part. So now anybody in the blue who searches my keywords, they'll see my ads. Anybody in the red will not see my ads and anybody who's not in the blue also will not see my ads. So this is how you can get refined with what cities you're targeting or what parts of town you're targeting. Now I'm going to remove that. I just wanted to show you that you could do it. Okay. And then you would hit save. Now, because I didn't make any changes, I don't have anything to save. So I'm going to hit cancel. So I'm targeting Oshawa and Whippy. Now I speak English. So obviously I would have it as English, but say you're multicultural and your first language isn't English. Let's just use Spanish as an example. You could actually only target people that are Spanish. And then you could write your ad in Spanish. And then when you call the people, you'd be speaking Spanish. So there's a huge benefit to targeting people based on language. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as English because that's unfortunately the only language I speak. For the budget, you can do a monthly budget or an average daily budget. So if it's on monthly, I'd say a good monthly budget for most agents would be 300 to 500 a month is a good standard single agent typical ad budget. Um, if you're looking at it from a daily rate, if you clicked on daily, then maybe your daily rate would be like $5 a day, $10 a day, or maybe $15 a day. I'm just going to do the monthly budget and I'm going to change it to uh, 300. All right, so we're going to scroll down to that. Bidding, what do you want to focus on? Um, focus on, you can do conversions, but you have to have the tracking code and everything set up, which is going to be more complicated than most people can handle. So just to get rolling, I would do clicks. You can set a maximum cost per click as well. I was on the phone with one client and uh, her average cost per click was um, around $20 a click. That wasn't per, per lead or per form. That was per click. That is ridiculous. Typically, a uh, cost per click is like, say, $0.30 cents to two fifty, give or take. So I would say, you know what? I'm not willing to spend any more than, say, $4 per click or $3 a click. So you can set that up. Uh, let's just do three. All right. Now, let me show you what these extensions are. This is, like... Really, really interesting. Let me do, I'll do Toronto. Toronto real estate. Okay, so I just Google searched Toronto real estate for sale. So here's an advertiser, here's an advertiser, here's an advertiser, and here is an advertiser. Okay, now look at this advertiser right here. It says Toronto Omelas listing. So there's one line of blue text, one line of green text, and one line of black text. Well, look at this advertiser. They have one line of blue, one line of green, three lines of black text, and another row of blue text as well. Oh, hold on, let me stop this video. All right, so how does this advertiser have so much more space? They're literally taking up one, two, three, four, five, six lines of text, whereas this advertiser is only taking up three. Clearly, this one has a greater chance of catching a person's eyeball because it takes up more of the screen real estate available. Well, these things are called ad extensions. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on site link extension. There's a little drop down. And then you're going to click on this little blue button that says new site link extension. So the first one, let me show you. So this blue line right here. That's the site link. He's, he or she is using Vaughn Homes, Richmond Homes, Markham Homes, and Aurora, which is great. They should be doing that, and so should you. So you can do it just like they did based on the area, or you can do it based on the service. So let's say our first one would be house values. The description, I would say, thinking of selling.
Durham Region House Values. Now it says the final URL. What you're going to do is you're going to go to your website. So here I'll go to my fake little website. And then I would navigate to the house value form. If you have a real estate website, I am 90% sure that your website has uh, find out what your home is worth or house value contact form. So go to that page, which I'll do right now. Then I'm going to copy the URL up at the top. And then I'm going to go back to Google and I'm going to paste it as the following url if you're wondering what the warning symbol means it's because i'm not using https which is a secure site um, if your website isn't https contact whoever you bought the domain through it's probably godaddy or one of those companies contact them and, and say i want a https and they'll charge you a yearly fee it's not a lot of money um, and google really is striving for that so all, if your website is not secure you should make it secure uh it's a yearly fee okay so that's the first site link house values what's another common call to action or item that people would be interested in well probably homes for sale so my next one would say mls listings for sale real estate Real estate for sale in Durham. Search homes on a map or whatever you want to say. And then I would go to my website. And then I would navigate to either your website has a page full of listings or it has a page with a call to action that's like find your dream home and a person would fill in all the criteria. So you want to navigate to that buyer page, copy the URL go back to Google, and then put it as the final URL. You can add a third site link um, if you wanted, but I, two or three is what you should do. I want to leave it as two to save time. And you would hit save. Now, I'm not going to hit save because I actually don't want to run this ad, and I don't want to clog up my system with a bunch of fake site links. So you hit save. I am hitting cancel. All right. So the next one is the call out extension. So this is basically keyword stuffing. So let me go back to Google and see if anybody is using it. I think this person is, yeah, this one looks like it right here. So see how this is three lines of black text? Well, this last line is literally, oh, maybe not. Anyways, Basically, it's one single keyword at a time. So this person says daily listing updates, uh, fastest updates, interactive map search, thousands of listings. So we are going to add those keywords. So I would hit add call out extension and you could add like three or four of them. So for me, I would say um, Oshawa Something like that. So I put the two main areas, Oshawa Real Estate, Whippy Real Estate, thousands of listings updated daily. And then when my ad is running, that would be down here in this section right here. And it just adds more space to your ad and it add, stuffs it with more keywords that people are searching. So it's really good. Okay, so once you add your call out extensions, you can do it um, whatever you want. You can make a call to actions. You could, I would just add the keywords, the main keywords that people are looking and hit save. So you guys hit save when you're watching the recording, but for me, I'm going to hit cancel. Okay, now the call extension. This is when a person is doing a search on a mobile device on their phone. And then in your ad, does anybody have it here? This person. So see this call extension? It just adds your phone number directly to it. Now, nobody from a desktop is going to click on that um, or even call it. But on a mobile device, I mean, you could put your phone number and there's a chance that a person would call you directly. I mean, we have the options, so you might as well. So if I go back to Google, you're going to hit the add new call extension. 
uh, you're going to pick the right country. So it's defaulted to the United States. So if you're in Canada, obviously you would change it to Canada. Then you would put your phone number and leave all the rest of the stuff as is. And then you would hit save. And then that will put your phone number directly into the ad. So I'm not going to hit save. I'm going to hit cancel. Now, there's more extensions. If I hit this add extension, look at these ones. If you have an app, some of you guys and gals have uh, your company or your franchise will provide with you um, your own version of an app. Well, you can have that. So if I hit app extension and then hit new app, ex oops, and then hit new app extension, I could be specific and say, okay, anybody who's on an iOS device, search up the app in the app store and then you put it in there and then uh, people can download your app directly how cool is that so you would do two uh, i would want to do one for android and one for ios and i would hit save for both of them okay so that's if you have an app there's other options too you could do location extensions um, if you just want to add keywords of the areas that you serve uh, there's a whole bunch of other options that you can do but the main ones are these the call sorry, not the call, the call out extension and the site link. Those are the two main ones that you want to do. Oh, what's that? Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, okay, I'm going to hit save and continue. It says local search or name already exists. That's because I already have this in my account, which you won't. So I want to do test two, save and continue. Okay, the first step, what we just set up was the campaign level. Now we're moving on to the more refined part where we're saying, okay, we're going to create the ads specifically. So the name of the group should be whatever the call to action or keyword is that you're going for. So in this case, um, the main ones, I'll just type them out here. So the main ones you would do, you would make one ad for open houses. You would do another ad for house values. Another one for real estate for sale. Those are the top three that you want to start with. Uh, they're the, obviously the most logical ones. Right now, we're going to focus on the open house part of it. Okay. So for ad group number one, I'm going to name it open house. And then in this section right here, this is where we put all of the keywords. So let me go to my Word document. I already typed out a starter list for you. Oh, hold on a second. All right. I already typed out a starter list of all the keywords, and we're going to give this to you as a download. Let me paste it in here. Okay, see how it says uh, change city? Obviously, you're going to want to change that to be your city. So I'm going to show you a quick little trick. On a Word document, if I hit Control F on my keyboard, it gives me the navigation to find text. There's a little drop down, and it has an option to replace. So I'm going to find, what do I want to find? The plus symbol change city. So I'm going to type that out, plus change city and what do i want to replace it with plus symbol and then the name of your city so i'll do oshawa and then i hit replace all there we go and it automatically updated all of them so oshawa 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 now you're probably wondering why do i have a plus symbol in front of each word okay this is the deal set up all of your keywords at first so that you have a plus symbol and let me zoom in so you can actually see this really good don't do this. Don't do, oh, Danny says I need a plus symbol. So I'm going to do plus symbol, Oshawa plus open plus house. You don't want the space between the plus and the word. So what you want is the plus symbol plus the word. So all together as, as, a, as if it's one. So that is proper. If there's a space between them, that is not proper. Now, you don't know why I want you to do that. Just trust me on this. Add the plus symbol in front of all of your keywords to start off with. 
Then what we do in about two weeks, three weeks to a month, you log back into your Google Ads account and you'll see which ones are, which keywords are working and which ones aren't. And if any of them aren't working, then what we do is we remove the plus symbol and we put the quotation. Like that. I'm the type of guy where you don't have to like build the watch for me. You just got to tell me the time. So if you're going to tell me that's what I have to do, that's what I'm going to have to do. So don't worry about like why I'm telling you this. Just trust me. I'm saving you a ton of money by adding the plus symbol in front of each of the keywords. And then after a couple of weeks go by, then you can go in and modify the ones that aren't working. Okay. So I would do this, select all the keywords we just did. Oh, I added a bunch of uh, like, you're going to want to add more of the franchises and local brokerages in your area. And this one I'm going to remove because the, the plus 21 might screw things up. So let's delete that. But you're going to want to add all of the brokerages and franchises in your area, not just your own. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to copy all of this. Copy. There was a question before I move on. I'll answer it. Does a plus sign mean that the word must be prevalent in the search? Yeah. Okay. Good question. Let me show you. So if somebody goes to Google and they search, um, what would be an example? Oshawa rental house. Mm. No, let's do this. Oshawa can say somebody's searching for a can opener and they want to buy it in Oshawa. Well, the Oshawa and the word open could trigger your keywords. But because we have the plus symbol in front of each word, what we're saying is when they do the Google search, they have to have Oshawa, plus they have to have the word open, plus they have to have the word house. And it doesn't have to be in that particular order, just as long as their search, when they do the search, it has those three words specifically. They could have other words in it, but we're being very specific that it has to have these three variations. Hopefully that answered you. I'm going to paste the keywords in here. It's okay if you have spaces between them. Don't worry about that and hit save and continue. Now we're creating the ad right here. So it shows us a preview of what the ad is going to look like. See the very first step, it says final URL. It's going to just pull in whatever your website was. But because we know we're triggering based on the open house keyword, obviously I don't want them going to my website. I want them going to the landing page or a page on my website that talks about open houses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my website and I'm going to find the landing page that we created about open houses. I'm going to copy that URL and that's the very first step that you want to do. Paste. Question. What's the idea of listing all the brokerages in the area? Well, if a person, anybody who's thinking of going to an open house, most likely they saw an open house sign writer on the for sale sign and they go to Google and they're going to search the name of that company open house because they're looking for that open house. Okay. Headline number Okay, Oshawa open houses, real estate for sale, Saturday and Sunday open houses. So that's the headlines. And then under the description, get a full list of this week's open houses in Durham region.
All right, that's a pretty nice, clean, simple little ad. Now, see how sparse this is? Remember that all those site links that we just created, that's gonna get added underneath and like make this ad basically double the size, which is awesome. All right, so hit save and continue. and continue to campaign. Okay, now here's my campaign right here. If I click on ads and extensions, it's gonna show me that I have one ad. Well, you should actually have like at least three ads for this one. So I'm gonna hit the plus button, add a text ad, select the the group that we're doing it for so as we create more of these in the future say i do a house value one there'll be other options down here where i can choose house value homes for sale townhomes investment investment property pre-construction so you want to as time goes on keep adding more and more and more i want to do open house all right so now we've got the one here now we're working on this one so i'm going to change this up a little i'm going to say whippy Whippy open houses. Updated daily. Get a list of all houses this weekend. All right, so I wanna save and add another. And I'm going to change this. I'm going to say um, Durham region Durham region open houses homes for sale. Weekend houses hmm no Durham region open houses homes for sale Saturday and Sunday that's good let me add the word this, this Saturday and Sunday. Cool. All right. Da, 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 da. Save ad. So now we have three different ads that are going to be running. So let me hit save ad. There we go here. So now when you click on the ads and extensions, you're going to see three different ads. And in two weeks or three weeks when you come in to check this out you're going to see one of your ads is kicking butt and the other ones aren't working so good so what you can do is see what's working with the one and then modify the other two you don't want to just rely on one ad because what if your one ad was one of the duds and you didn't realize that by just changing up a few of the words you'd have a better click-through rate so this is why you want to create three ads for it the other thing you want to do is click on keywords and it's going to show you a list of all of the keywords that we're targeting. So say, um, say in three weeks you come in and some of the keywords aren't working out so well for you. What you can do is click on this little pencil button and then just change it. So I would change it to uh, phrase match and get rid of the plus symbols. And then hit save. So now it's gonna look a little bit different. So see how these ones have the plus symbols? And then this one doesn't have any plus symbols, but it has the quotations around it. Change, make that change. What you basically want is them to be eligible and have a high click-through rate. So the CTR. The click-through rate is based on how many times was that triggered and then how many times did they click the higher the click-through rate the better um, so 
say I make that change. And then a couple of weeks later, I log back in and all the ones that I did this with the quotation, they're not working out so well. I'll hit the plus button and then I, I could make it a broad match and then hit save. The reason I don't like broad match too well is because it is literally broad. What if a person searched like um, open houses for sale, but they were actually searching for like a school open house or like a church open house or a rental open house or all these other things. Um, that's why I don't like the broad match, but I'm just showing you that's kind of like my pecking order. The first one is to just do the plus symbol attached to each word. And then if that's not working, I'll change it to the quotations. And then if that's not working, I can try the broad. Okay, there's a question. What's a good CTR that we should be hoping for? Oh man, the higher the better, really. Um, Click-through rates are typically on the lower end of things, like in the single digit percentages. Like, I don't even know what uh, some of our click-through rates are, but like, it's not like you're gonna get a 20% click-through rate or 50% click-through rate. It's gonna be like, for most of you, it's gonna be like, 6%, 10%, 8%, 3%, that sort of thing. But what you're really worried about is the ones that are like 0.001% click-through rate. Something's not matched up. That's what you're really concerned about. There. That was a lot faster than I thought. I did this uh, yesterday as a trial run. It took me 45 minutes. Today, we did it in 37. So there you go. That is how you would set up Google Pay-Per-Click for the open house terms. And um, since we got some time to kill, let's see. Negative keywords, we could add negative keywords. So you click on keywords and then negative keywords. And I'm going to add this. And I will do it at the campaign level. And you want to make sure that you have the right campaign. And we're going to do um, rent, rentals. Lease, leasing. Um, sometimes you guys use the keyword like MLS as a keyword, and that's also a soccer league. So we could remove things like football and soccer. Rent, rents, oh, rents, rentals, lease, leasing. There. She had, I want to add this for the negative keywords. Okay. I just sent it to everybody through the chat. Okay. So those are the negative keywords. So I'm going to hit save. All right. Once the ads have been running for a while, you're going to be able to log in and see what search terms are working and which ones are not working. And uh, we do this a lot as well. But uh, to get things up and running, just follow the video I just sent you or that I just created right now and then uh, follow it step by step. The best thing I, I like about Google Pay-Per-Click is kind of like once you set it up, you can kind of forget about it. I mean, you have to go in and do a couple maintenance things, but I've had some campaigns running for years, like seven years, eight years. The keywords don't change. The landing page doesn't have to be new to me. It just has to be new to the person who's doing the search. So once you find something that works and really dial it in, it's like just another fishing pole you have out in the water. And uh, the more you put out there, the more bait you have and the more chance you're going to get leads. So this is just one example of that. If you need help with this and you want to share a screen and I can walk you through it privately or you want me to do it for you, that is definitely a possibility. Just send me a message and uh, we'll connect. All right, that's up and running. All right, everyone, that's today's session. So I want to hang out and if there's questions, I'm here. But if not, you're all free to go. The recording goes up Monday evening and our next session is going to be on open house marketing through Facebook and Instagram. Hey, if you want to close more real estate transactions, get more buyer leads, and get more seller leads, click this button right here. It'll take you to our real estate group coaching page. 
Also, if you like this video and want more, you can subscribe by pressing this, or you can check out some of my past videos here. Enjoy!